Hey gang, welcome to the live. Welcome to the live game. I know I started a little earlier today, um, but I wanted to go ahead and get started on the live and we'll allow more people to, you know, take some time to come in. But I want to say welcome to the live. Thanks so much for joining me. It is the lab girl. And we're doing a live on which lab you prefer working in, big or small. But today we're going to focus on working in a big histology lab, the pros and the cons. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we get into the live, um, I want to say if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Um, I am a histologist, which you guys can see on my channel. I make histology content. And uh, yeah, so I really, really want to say thank you so much for um, just going on this journey with me and we are definitely growing and we have a lot of um, good quality content on this on this channel. So I hope you guys can gain from it. And yeah, let's go ahead and get that out the way and we can go ahead and talk about the benefits or the pros of working in a big histology lab. Now I pinned a comment in the comment section to say um, basically what are some of your pros and cons of working in a big histology lab? Um, do you prefer working in a small lab or do you prefer working in a big lab? And if it really just doesn't matter, then that's another option that you guys can put down as well. Shout out to the replay game because I know my replay gang won't watch this until a little bit later or listen to this a little bit later so shout out to you guys for definitely coming through and shout out to you guys um, for joining me today for this live Okay, so what are some of your pros and cons working in a big histology lab? Now, I didn't really have a lot of cons. I thought I would have more cons, but whenever I started to prepare for this live, really a lot of cons didn't come to mind. So that may be a really, really good thing. Um, but I did do a video on my channel about a year ago of the pros and cons working in the histology lab. So you guys can definitely check that out. I just compared both of the labs working in a small lab versus working in the big labs. And then I compared the two and then I chose which lab that I liked the best. So when it came to processing specimens, uh, when it came to grossing, when it came to embedding specimens, when it came to cutting, um, I just chose which lab that I prefer the most whenever it came to those basic um, categories. But today we're gonna speak about the pros and the cons of working in a big lab. A little background about myself is um, I normally work in small labs, but the laboratory that I work in today is the biggest lab that I've ever worked in. Even though I worked in a hospital setting lab um, as a traveler, the lab was still small compared to the lab that I work at today. So what I like to do is when it comes to a big lab versus a small lab, I like to think of the block count being 500 blocks or less on a daily block count. That's what I consider a small lab. So for instance, um, a block count of maybe 100, 150. Um, I worked in a lab where the block count can be 300, you know, 350, and that's every day with like two histotechs, or sometimes it would just be myself. So that's what I consider a small lab. The lab is still busy, so I don't want to take away from that. But whenever you're working in a bigger lab, I like to say, okay, the block count is generally 500 and up. Yes, we may have slow days, but technically, on a normal day out of five days out of the week or out of, out of seven days out of the week, we're going to have at least a block count high of 500 blocks and up. So that's what I consider a 
bigger lab or a busy bigger lab. All right, so while we are waiting for more um, people to join the live, let's go ahead and get into a throwback video. Uh, we're gonna talk about the pros first and then we'll go ahead and get into the cons. So the pros um, for working in a big lab would definitely be more tissue identification. And the reason why I say more tissue identification is because working in a big lab, I've noticed that you're able to come across different types of specimens in the lab. Um, if you are a student, you probably get the same specimens um, in your histology lab. So it may just be the basic um, specimens like GIs or breast and derm or, or just a selected few. You may not see the different um, biopsies that you can see working in a bigger lab. So if you guys frequent my channel enough, you guys will see that I do have a playlist. I have a microtomy playlist where I've um, basically show you guys the different tissue types that I cut in the lab. So let's go ahead and look at that playlist. And that way you guys can see exactly what different specimens that I cut. Okay, so here you see I have a punch biopsy. This is um, some skin. And I'm glad that I created these microtomy videos for you guys because it gives you guys a an outlook on, on what you'll be cutting in a bigger histology lab, um, unless you are working just in a specific type of lab. So just say if you're working just in a derm lab, then of course you only have derm blocks. But whenever you're working in a bigger lab, you have the opportunity to get different specimens and work with different specimens and you actually will get familiar with you know with the, the micron um, you'll get familiar with how to embed the biopsies um, but I think this was a good opportunity for you guys to see okay like the tissue can be very scant the tissue can be very small uh, the tissue can be very thin um, and if you're not the one who are cutting or if you're not the one who's embedding the tissue whenever you get it for um microtomy purposes then you know you're not really seeing what the tissue looks like so let's go ahead and go to another we're gonna go ahead and go to another video that i did cutting a different you know different kind of tissue most advanced website design platform made for you okay and in this come up and coming video i'm showing you guys on my channel this is your ear nose and throat so it's ent i'm not really sure um exactly what part you know this is from but um, I have created these videos for you guys because this allowed me to show you guys that you're going to come across different tissue types. And that's the great thing about working in a bigger histology lab because you won't just be with one type of tissue type. And you can get comfortable with all tissue types. You can get comfortable with, you know, the orientation, how it looks. If it's going to be dry if it's going to be bloody how many microns you should cut the tissue at um, so definitely check out my microtomy playlist that i have right here on my channel i created this for you guys um, just so you can get familiar with you know how your setup is going to be if you guys see i have how to cut a histology slide how to clean your microtome cutting controls 
how to cut lymph nodes which you what you're seeing now um so yeah definitely take advantage of these microtomy videos and um that's definitely a benefit of working in a a bigger lab Okay, so the next pro of working in a bigger lab will have to be training in other areas if there's opportunity and also getting a promotion. So that's a great thing about working in a bigger lab is because there's definitely room for improvement. There's definitely room for growth. Um, there's room for opportunities there's room for promotions i mean if you think about it a big lab the, a big lab is always growing always expanding um, and this is only by experience i know you can possibly go into a bigger lab and they have 30 to 40 histotechs and you know what if everyone is just where they need to be and they don't have any opportunity for growth that's very rare. Um, when you think about it, most of the time, whenever you're going into the lab, um, it's normally more people who are about to retire. That's just been my experience. Um, I'm seeing now younger people um, coming into the lab and younger people applying for histology jobs and younger people working in, histo in the histology lab and histology profession. So that's really a good thing. So the older histotechs, um, they are literally preparing to retire. So it's a good thing because there's going to be room for growth. There's going to be room for, you know, you to um, be able to do new things if you work in a bigger lab. Um, training. I think working in a bigger lab, the training is a little bit different. I feel like that they take more um they take more time with you whenever you need to train because the lab is a 24 hour lab and it runs, um, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can't learn everything in, you know, a few weeks. You can't learn everything, you know, in a few months. Sometimes it takes th people longer to learn, you know, new things. So I feel like that the grace is there as far as, you know, you learn how to do a lot of things because we know that it's a lot for you to take in. So um, working in a, a bigger lab, definitely there's room for opportunity. There's room for promotions. Um, there's room for growth. So that's a great thing about working in a bigger histology lab. Okay, and before we get into the last pro that I've um, came up for you, uh, came up with for you guys, um, do not forget to thumbs up the live whenever you are joining in the live. And for my replay game, definitely list um, in the comment section whenever you listen to this live what is a pro or what is a con um, that you enjoy or you you dislike about working in a big histology lab. I was going to put um, that also to that a pro or a con can be, you know, is the fact that you are always busy. Um, that's definitely a pro and a con because um, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things where like you're you're continuously busy if you're in a big lab. Um, you 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 will always have something to do. Um, you will always have work, and I think for. I think for histotechs, I think that's a great thing. Like we like to go in and we like to know, okay, like we actually have work because that makes our day go by quicker. Um, so that's definitely a, a great thing being busy. I didn't put that down as a pro because for some people that can be a con because not every histotech wants to be busy every single day and that can be overwhelming for them. But I definitely do think side note that being busy is definitely um, a huge pro for a big lab because not only does it allow you to 
um, perfect your craft because if you are new histotech and you get into a lab and it's slower, then you don't have, you're not cutting enough blocks to, to gain your speed, to gain quality, to just have um, more time to work with different types of tissue. So the more blocks you have, the more blocks you can embed, um, the more blocks you know that you can cut, that allows for your growth in the histology lab. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I try. If it wasn't for you guys, then I definitely would not be doing this. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, how do you say your name? Arcilism? I hope I'm saying that right. But thank you so much for, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And while you're here, do you have, do you prefer a large lab or do you prefer a small lab? I would love to know. Have you, or have you worked in both? Okay, now the only con, um, well, there's a few cons that I listed in my cons category for um, pros and cons of working in a big histology lab. The only con is not doing more things manual as a histotech. So let's go ahead and break that down. Okay, so the first thing is not doing more things manual as a tech. Prime example for myself is uh, whenever I came from a smaller lab, I did everything manual. I did my H&E staining manual. Um, I did my special stains manual. I trimmed my blocks manually with the little knife um, that you would use in school. We didn't have a block warmer or anything to melt the paraffin off the blocks. Um, but I think more labs have that now. But I did come from a smaller lab to where, you know, I did most of the things manually in my last lab. So whenever I got to the lab that I'm at now, which is a bigger lab, you have the you have the automated special stains um, artisan, you have the automated H&E machine. There is some things that you still do manually um, like the gram stain, um, there's are there are things that you can still do man manually, and also too you can do the H and E um, for the kidneys manually as well. But I think um, the only con is you missing out on doing things manually. You're missing out because when everything becomes automated as a histotech, it definitely helps you out. Do not get me wrong. I love the fact that things are automated. When I worked in general histology, I don't have that life or <laughs> that luxury now. But when I worked in general histology, um, I love the fact that everything was automated because it allows the histotech to just focus only on what they need to do and not having to get up, you know, get the rack together, stain their slides, go back and cut, hear the timer beep. I mean, that's all you'll hear is just beep, beep, beep. And I remember where, where I um, was doing things manually, I literally would sit down for a few seconds. But once that timer would beep for that special, just say if I was doing a, um, a ABPAS, and it was time for me to get up and stain that and go to the next step, then you know, it just takes me away from what I was currently doing. And it, uh, it doesn't allow me enough time to actually finish my task. And a I, what I would consider a good, you know, a good time because I was going back and forth and doing things. So, um, Doing things manually as a tech, that's the only con because what happens is once you get into an automated state of mind, you never want to go back. And that's a great thing. But then just just say worst case scenario or a good case scenario, you need to go and help out or you get another job and you know, things just are not done. Man, things are not done automated. Of course, they'll train you. But it's like riding a bike. It's like you forget. But then, you know, the training wheels would be back on again. You're like, oh, okay, like, dang, like, I feel so stupid because I don't even know how to do a PAS manually, but it'll take time. So I just feel like, you know, you you don't want to lose that that manual 
skill that you got, especially if something breaks down and you're able to stain something manually, there should always be a protocol in your lab that shows you how to stain things manually. And you should be able to stain things manually um, by, you know, following the protocol. So that shouldn't be any problem. Um, the next thing is um, basic things like writing slides. That's another manual thing um, that is a con by working in a big lab. I used to write the slide with a pencil. And these are the, the funny thing is, as I'm talking to you guys now, I work in the automated lab, but because I'm in Neuropath, things are done manually. So it's a whole separate process from general histology. So whenever my labels are not printed for my slides that I've created, then I manually write those slides or I may have to manually make a cassette and write the, the cassette in pencil. For all my old school histologists, you know what that what that is. You write in a cassette with the patient's name or whatever in pencil um, until you or that just may be how all your cassettes are. I know at my derm lab, everything was done in pencil. But then, you know, now that I'm in neuropath, things are done manually as far as the slides, but I still sometimes have to manually write things with a pencil um, at my travel job. Everything was done as far as like for me. Um, things was already, the slides were already labeled for me whenever I went into work because they wanted us to only focus on cutting. So there's different practices at different labs that's going to help the workflow of your lab. Um, quality control. I really stress this for all of us as histotechs, for myself, for all of us, um, especially being a new histotech and coming into um, a, a smaller lab, which we would talk about a smaller lab in another live. But whenever you are in a bigger lab, quality control can sometimes not be the priority. So just get into the habit, which I have dozens of videos on my channel speaking about quality control. Um, but that is definitely taking the time to making sure that your slide matches your block, making sure that you're cutting one block at a time. These are the things that you should be learning in class or these are the things you should be learning in school um, from the beginning. So making sure that your block matches your slide, making sure that you cut one block at a time, make sure you embed one block at a time, making sure that that tissue specimen matches the patient that you're doing. There's so many different ways to quality control or QC your work. Definitely important for any histotech because it can happen to the best of us, trust me. The next um, con by working in a big lab because, and these are cons only because whenever you work in a big lab, your life is made a tad bit easier than someone coming from a small lab and they had to do everything. They had to be the lab tech. They had to be the histotech or, you know, it was just you and the lab tech, or maybe it was just a few histotechs and, uh, you know, one or two lab techs and the workflow was busy just for you guys. So these are only cons because whenever you work in a bigger lab, most histotechs don't have that pressure anymore. So we get a little bit relaxed because we're like, oh my God, like we don't have to really focus on what we used to focus on because maybe we looked up and we got into a lab that handles most of the work and all we need to do is just cut and embed and do whatever duties that we need to do. Welcome to the live, you guys. Um, I did start a little bit earlier, so that was, <laughs> I'm sorry, I started like maybe 10, 15 minutes earlier. I know the time's at 2 p.m., So, but thank you so much for joining the live. I really appreciate it, gang. Uh, if you have any pros and cons that you can think of, please jot them in the comment section down below. Um, you literally... Um, just miss me going over some different tissue specimens in the lab, which was some pros and we can do a wrap up before, you know, we end this live. So just in case you guys missed anything, you can definitely catch it on the replay. But um, as far as another con about working in the lab, it will have to be 
troubleshooting. Once again, whenever you work in a big lab, um, it's histotex. I'm think and I'm really focusing on histotex, not lab text, because um, lab text literally are like the glue. That's how that's how I like to look at things. Um, you guys know I have this big thing where I like to reference things. Frida is a mother. The study book is the daughter. You know, the histotech, the, the lab techs are like the glue. And it's things that they can do that we probably generally don't have either A, enough time if you're working in a big lab, or B, you know, they are assigned to so many different tasks. So troubleshooting if you if the if the h and &E machine or something isn't stained correctly or you know if if the h and &E if the h and &E machine breaks or if the h and &E machine isn't working or it needs to be changed or anything like that we have lab techs who can focus on that but the con of that is that you know what happens like if we go back to the basic things we should be able to get that rack of slides and manually do an H and E and get and still get the slides out the door. So those are the things like if 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 the if any automated machine breaks down, the wonderful world of the automated system, you can call a tech and they can fix it or the lab techs can fix it or someone can come and straighten it out and they know what to do. But sometimes as a histo tech you go back there to the machine and you're like, you know, like, okay, like what do we do again? Like I haven't done this in a long time. Like, okay, like, you know, and you're you're sitting there not looking stupid, but you're just like dumbfounded, like, damn, like I haven't done anything manually in a long time. So it just it helps if you can still keep that skill and not just rely on a machine to do it. Troubleshooting is major key. And I'm saying that because I'm gonna give you guys a situation that happened to me the other night. Um, I was cutting a muscle case in the cryostat and this muscle was giving me every bit of a headache. I, it was just horrible. And I was cutting it and my crazy tail, I stained the slide um, a quick diff or a quick H&E. And whenever I stained it, I noticed that one of the frozen sections was on the back of the slide so I'm thinking like damn what am I going to do because it's at the end of my shift I really want to get this stain and scanned for the pathologist to see and I've already put away the muscle so I really didn't have enough time so I'm stressing about it like okay so we normally put two sections on the slide and what I did was I was just like, you know what? It took me a minute, but I was like, okay, do I want to toss this slide and waste a frozen section? Or normally you get two sections, but sometimes you have those days to where you can't even get two sections maybe because the tissue was giving me some trouble. So what I did was I dipped the slide, I dipped the slide in a little bit, of, I dipped the gauze, I'm sorry, in a little bit of alcohol and I just wiped the tissue off the back of it. So I still had one section cover slip. So it's just like little things that you can like think of that will probably be, you know, quick when it comes to troubleshooting. Um, as a histotech, I think that's very important. And that's, we're going to get into, um, we're going to get into, you know, my last pro of, you know, why working in a big lab will make you a better histotech. So just troubleshooting is really important. Um, and I talked about the H and E and another thing too, with a, well, working in a big lab is not being, I should have put not being one-on-one -on -one with the pathologist. I really think is, you know, in any time in your career, if you can have some type of like dialogue or work one-on-one -on -one with pathologists, um, just so you can see exactly, you know, how histotechs and pathologists really work together because when you think about it they were the glue to their job just like lab techs are the glue to histotechs jobs so really important try to 
one day in your career, whenever you can, if you can work in, which is a pro about working in a small lab, which I will speak on that more in, you know, in that conversation or in that live of working in a smaller lab, that is being one-on-one with pathologists and pathologists, you know, learning who you are and, you know, you just being inspired by them and they, and, and just, you know, developing that relationship with them. And I think in a bigger lab, the con is you're not able to do that. Yes, they probably know who you are. Yes, they probably know you're the histology crew. Yes, they probably know you're doing a great job. Yes, they probably know maybe a few of you one-on-one if you've been working there for quite some time or if they pass through or they get to know you by face or by name, maybe because you answer the phone, which are all great things. But in the future, if you can work in a smaller lab, being one-on-one with the pathologist would definitely help you in your career. Okay, now let's go back to the final pro of being a well-rounded histotech. Okay, so the final pro on working in a big histology lab would be being a well-rounded histotech. Um, The reason why I'm touching on this is because you will be working with different personalities. You'll be learning from other histotechs. You can pick up different troubleshooting ways, how another histotech may troubleshoot a block or how they may troubleshoot embedding or, you know, some little different things, tips or tricks that they do um, to perfect their embedding to perfect their cutting to perfect their special stains how do they handle you know different situations at different stations that they may be assigned to how to get better sections it it sort of helps you to pick up your own style of being a histotech and i had to learn something the other day Whenever I was, whenever I was facing my blocks, I would face them, I guess like a rough face. And then I would just put them on ice. So in all of my six years of being a histotech, I would normally just face my sections and then put them on ice. But just yesterday or the day before I had to learn that what happens is that actually puts holes in my sections because I rough face them. And I didn't rough face them and then slowly like turn down the micron and probably like give it a couple spins and then put it on the put it on the ice. So that's something that I just learned a few days ago. And I guess like that opened up my eyes because like all this time I'm thinking like, oh, I'm just facing my blocks and I'm just putting them on ice to soak. And then I'm just picking it up and I, you know, I get my sections. I'll probably turn it a little. I turn it. A couple of rounds and then I'll pick up my section. But my sections look better now once I face my blocks, do a couple rounds um, at a lower micron. Don't just face it at just say 20 microns, rough face it. And then I need to gradually go into like whatever micron I'm going to do, give it a couple spins and then place it on my eyes. So that's going to help me be a well-rounded tech because now my sections won't look crappy because they're probably looking crappy (laughs) all this time because I rough face all the time. So I'm going to learn not from my mistake, but just I'm going to learn because I didn't, it was something I just, I didn't know. Like I didn't know that it was holes in my, in my sections because once you put it down on the, on the water bath, you don't see the holes. You see the holes microscopically. So all this time I've been a crappy cutter (laughs) and now I know. So just working in a big lab is going to allow you to be a well-rounded tech as far as that aspect that definitely helped with my cutting skills, something I learned Um, also to sponges whenever you put your tissue, you know, in inside of the two blue sponges sometimes the sponges can create artifact on the tissue whenever you make it like a little sandwich so 
I didn't know that as well because you know we're pulling the the tissue if the tissue is really you know if it's melted inside the sponge we're pulling the tissue away from the sponge but now that sponge has created artifact so literally you guys all this week I have been getting constructive criticism all week long and it's really helped me you know, be a well-rounded tech because these are things that I truly didn't know. I didn't, no one has ever told me putting tissue between the sponge because the gross room does it all the time. But because I'm cutting a certain type of tissue, the neuropathologist can actually see that. And maybe, you know, a, a general pathologist who specializes in just say breast or something, maybe they can't, maybe they're not really paying attention to the sponge. Maybe they know it's a sponge. They're not really paying attention to it, but you know, the pathologist who views my slides made it, you know, they brought it to my attention. And that's a good thing about getting constructive criticism because these are the things that are going to help me later next week, you know, going forward. These are the things that are going to help me in my career. So this is the reason why I'm doing this because I'm telling you guys this because maybe you can maybe you can relate you know if you are cutting and you're rough facing and you never you know just do a couple rounds and gradually go into like a lower mark you know micron and then put it on your ice these are things that I've never been told before so I'm really appreciative at the fact that this just you know adds to me being a well-rounded tech and then let's go back to the different personalities and learning from others. Um, there's so many different dynamics to a histotech. And I made a video. Um, all histotechs are made different. So I want you guys to definitely check that out. Let me go ahead and pull up. See if I can pull up that video real quick. People with ADHD save 10 hours studying with this Chrome extension. But no, by all means, go ahead, skip the ad, save a few seconds. Okay, so this I is a video. Um, job, you know, I'm just going to play a little bit of it because this really definitely really goes along with being a well-rounded tech. And working in a big lab will probably help you out with that. So this video I did, it's called All Histotechs Are Made Different. Let me go ahead and skip this ad. whenever you go to these labs. To join the game. Featured later though will be You guys been rocking with me since this so video. Um, you the real You the real and lipstick game. Because I made I'm this video a minute ago. Always, probably like you know a year and a half ago. Or a new so let's see what corners I gave you guys in this video. Yourself. Now we have to keep in mind that whenever it is your very first astrology job, you will be brand new and you will be working with other people who are more tenured than you whenever you are like trapped inside your head about man like i want to make sure that i make this great impression you end up making actually more mistakes whenever you're trying to make a great impression at your new facility and also trying to do your work so i would definitely tell you try not to beat yourself up you are a new histotech you're just learning and i'm pretty sure the other histotechs know that you're just learning too 
even if they don't even, you know, consider the fact that you're just learning, it's hard to automatically like fit in with these other histo texts. And I know that can be a hard thing. And once again, if you decide to get in your head or you just stay in your head thinking about people liking you or thinking about, you know, am I doing this correctly or I don't want to mess up, I want to make this good impression, then you end up probably making things worse for yourself instead of just being yourself and let your work speak for itself. Now, I know it's been a minute since I did a major key alert and major key alert, a lot of histotechs are set in their ways because I bet you if you look in the future and if you can see yourself as a histotech five to 10 years later, you're gonna be set in your ways too. There are certain histotechs who may, you know, have a certain way that they like things embedded or a certain way they like things, you know, to be cut or done or clean. It can be even something small as like how histo takes like something clean if you guys are sharing a station. Take it from me, I'm telling you guys what I have experienced. If you Okay, so if you guys remember, you know, when I did that video, all histo texts are made different. I was literally just pointing out that these are the type of different personalities or different type of histotechs that you will be working with. Whenever you're in a smaller histology lab, if it's just you and you're comfortable with, you know, yourself and you got another person, you know, it, it, you may not have any type of, I don't want to say friction, but you really don't have that. You don't have to share any space. You probably, you know, got your own microtone. You probably got your own, um, you know, just everything set up for yourself and that person or that other individual probably have everything set up that they've been having set up for whatever duration that they were there. But I want you guys to understand that these are the different types of things that are going to make you a well-rounded histotech. Because once you come into the histo lab and you are in different departments, you're working with different personalities, you're working with different people, your training may be different from what you've already learned before following the protocols, which is like the biggest thing because you never want to take the train of thought of, or well, this is how I used to do it here. So this is how I'm going to do it here. Things are totally different. So being a well-rounded tech that definitely has helped me out especially me being a traveler that's why i definitely encourage if you can travel definitely do that if you can because that will help you be a well-rounded histotech as well and before we go let's just see how i ended this video let's see if i give you guys any other advice that you know we can take along on this journey and um you know in this live with let's see work ethic and once you can just learn how to filter little things out here and there and just focus on your quality which is one of my uh, next advice which is quality work um, then once you focus on your quality and you get that down pat then I would definitely tell you that you would have a smooth uh, transition on your very first astrology job so if you are walking into a new lab and you never worked there before or you never been a histotech before or you are a traveler like myself your work will speak for itself. People will get to know you later, right? And I'm, I know it can be a little easier coming from me because I have worked in a couple of labs. I've been a permanent tech as well. So whether you are a traveler or whether you're permanent, these same rules will apply whenever you become a histotech. The next um, piece of advice I got for you guys will be to have quality work. Okay, so basically I ended that video with having quality work, which, you know, I spoke about, I know in other videos, um, that goes along with being a well-rounded tech, whether you work in a small lab or a big lab, um, you know, just focusing on your skill, focusing on you, focusing on, you know, how you're going to be a great histotech, period. So that's really if you guys have any comments or questions um, of, you know, about this live working in a big lab versus a small lab, big lab pros and cons. That's definitely, um, something that you guys can leave down below. Do not forget to join the gang. And if you are watching this on the replay, do not forget to, um, 
thumbs up the live as soon as you come in so YouTube knows that you enjoy my content. And the next live, I think we're gonna go ahead and focus on small labs, but just in case something changed, um, do not forget to check out my community tab. You guys can find that on my channel. Just go to the community tab because I like to ask you guys poll questions throughout the week so I can get a gauge on what we're gonna do here and what I'm gonna be speaking about next. Also, make sure your post notifications bell is turned on so you guys will be in the loop anytime I post upload do a community tab um, anytime, I, anytime I post another video or when I'm going live and yeah I hope I will see you guys in my next video bye